Hey, what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. <clears throat> so, what I want to do is go over uh, the new hunting rifle setup that we're going to be taking into the woods this year. Uh, I've had this rifle actually for a while now, and I just haven't really dedicated much time to it. Uh, but I finally got it broken in, oh, I don't know, maybe a week ago or so. I was able to head out, and I knew it was going to take a while because the, the barrel profile on this Kimber, this is a Kimber 84M uh, Hunter chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and because of the barrel profile with it being so thin, you really have to allow plenty of time between your shots and your groups for the barrel to cool back down to a reasonable level uh, before you go and you know just start slinging lead all over the place. So. There are a few videos about this rifle on YouTube that they're kind of doing a, a review of the rifle itself. Uh, there's one also where I think the guy, because this comes with a with a uh, MOA accuracy guarantee. So, you know, according to Kimber, if you use good quality ammunition, uh, it, it might even stipulate premium ammunition. I have no idea uh, where you draw the line on that. But if you use, you know, good ammunition in this rifle, you should be able to shoot three shots, uh, sub MOA. So three shots under an inch at a hundred yards, basically an inch or under. So, so, uh, but I knew, you know, hand loading for this thing, we're obviously going to be able to, um, you know, match that or do better, right? That's kind of the goal, right? We see that sub MOA accuracy guarantee, okay, that's great, you're talking factory ammo, I'm going to hand load, so I'm going to work on dialing in a load that's even better than that. Uh, but I was able to get the rifle broken in. I only did a 20-round break-in process. I was out there for forever, it felt like, um, you know, cleaning the barrel and, and all that in between each shot and trying to get everything broken in and good to go. But I feel like uh, barrel's broken in. We are now sitting at, um, oh, what is, I think we're, we're at 50 rounds. We are at uh, 50, no, 51 rounds through this rifle. Um, just like the Howa, you know, 1500 and 308, I think we're at 52 through that one. So we're at 51, same kind of deal. I'm gonna do a much better job of documenting every single round that goes through this barrel and just kind of doing a better job of keeping track of it. So the reason I wanted this rifle is because of how light it is. This is one of the lightest rifles that I could afford um, because Kimber also makes like the Mountain Ascent and some other rifles. There are other manufacturers out there that make really, really nice rifles that are extremely lightweight, uh, geared toward, you know, hunting purposes and all that. However, you, you definitely pay for them. I mean, they are outrageously expensive, but if that's something you're looking for, uh, and you just want to buy one hunting rifle that'll probably last you the rest of your life, and you want a really lightweight setup, then obviously, you know, spend your spend all your money to your heart's content, whatever. Uh, but I was wanting something that was extremely lightweight that I could take, and it's not like I'm going hunting in the mountains over here, right, North Alabama. It's just last year, I took my Savage 110 Tactical into the woods a couple of times, and that's like an eight, eight and a half pound rifle or something like that. Um, scope and all. Now you got to remember I had the, uh, I had that monster uh, Cabela's Covenant 7 Tactical 34 millimeter scope on top of it too. So I mean, a thing probably weighed 10 pounds going into the woods. Um, killed a couple of deer with it. And really that, that's, a, that's an amazingly accurate rifle. Great shooting rifle. But I didn't, I didn't necessarily have something that was dedicated just to hunting. I mean, I've got the 350 Legend, you know, 270 Winchester, all that stuff for hunting purposes. But I was really wanting, an, you know, a lightweight rifle, as light as I could possibly get that I could afford. And I settled on this Kimber 84M Hunter in 6.5 Creedmoor. Didn't want anything larger than that in terms of a round. I think 6.5 is probably just about the perfect round. Uh, for deer size game and even above that, you know, I've talked to several people that have killed elk with them. It's all about bullet selection and shot placement. So if you want to argue that point, definitely argue that down in the comments. But that's my opinion on it. Shot placement and bullet construction matter way more than the caliber that you're shooting. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, but right now, this is the current setup. Also, uh, 
I really love this trigger on this guy. It's a really nice trigger. I don't know what the weight is out of the box. I don't have a gauge to test it, but it's it's a great trigger uh, out of the box. And it's a really lightweight setup. I think it's like five and a half pounds, I believe the rifle is, before you add scope rings and load the magazine. And no, that's another thing I like. This is a flush fit magazine. So that's really nice, especially for hunting purposes. I think it only holds three, uh, which is more than enough. That, that's plenty. Um, after the first shot, probably not going to have a chance at a follow-up shot. So really that first one is the one that counts. Uh, so I like the flush fit magazine. And on top is just a really cheap BSA. This is like a $100 scope. BSA Optics. It's a 4 to 12. Um, but that's what I'm using to sight this guy in and find a really good load for it. And then from there, we're going to switch to our, our actual hunting. Oh, what we're going to hunt with... If I can get the box open here, trying to do it one-handed. Um, so this is the Leupold. Uh, it's like the Leupold Ultralight, you know, fixed two and a half power. That's what's going to go on this guy. That's what we're going to hunt with. So you can see, um, you can see the comparison there. I mean, it's it's a really it's a lightweight compact scope. I, again, I wanted the lightest weight setup that I could take into the woods. Uh, two and a half power, really clear, like really nice, uh, clear, crisp image in that scope. So I'm really liking that. It's fixed two and a half by 24 millimeter, I think. 20 millimeter. There you go. FX2, two and a half by 20 ultralight. Um, yeah, so this thing is extremely lightweight, which is another reason why I want it. I was trying to get all in, um, scope, Marines, everything. I was trying to come in six pounds and under. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit that uh, with the three rounds in the mag. I think we'll be close. Uh, but either way, you know, that's a huge weight savings over what I was running last year. You know, when you're talking probably close to a 10-pound rifle all in. Now we're down to six pounds. That's a big difference. Uh, when you're walking around the deer woods. So looking forward to this setup this season, um, working on getting some loads dialed in. And what I started with, so I basically broke the rifle in with just some random hand loads that I had worked up uh, that I had left over. And so shot 20 rounds through it, got everything broken in, came back, loaded up some test loads. And what I really want to do, just like I was doing with the Savage 110 Tactical, is I want to load up uh, or find a good load with multiple bullet weights, right? Because I want to just be able to grab one, you know, grab whatever, 120 grain nozzle or ballistic tip, right? Work up a good load with that. I want to grab a couple, head into the woods, hopefully I get a shot on a deer, check the performance of the bullet in the field, right? That's, that's really my goal uh, this season, work up a few good loads and hopefully be in a position to, to kill a few deer uh, and check bullet performance, right? That's really what I want to do. Plus, deer are extremely tasty so whatever but these are the three bullets that uh, i've chosen to work with first so this is the hornady 160 grain uh, round nose interlock then you've got the nozzler 120 grain ballistic tip and the spear 140 grain gold dot i've got a bunch of the gold dots um you know i think i've probably got 350 of those sitting in the building um and so we have no shortage of those that we can you know, really fine tune a load there and take that load development as deep as we want to with the gold dot. Not so much with the, with the 160s and the 120s for the nozzlers. And I don't really want to waste components with the nozzlers. The, those ballistic tips, man, they are hard to come by. Um, they pop up in stock very, re very rarely do they pop up in stock here lately. Uh, and I've got, I think like a box and a half. So I really want to be careful about you know, how deep I go with the load development on the 120s. Uh, and the 160s, you, those pop up from time to time. You can get them. Uh, they're not that difficult to, to locate. But uh, that's what I wanted to do. And I, I really wanted to see if we could have the same type of results that we had with our Savage 110 Tactical, right, in a different, different platform, different brand, the whole nine. Um, because in the Savage, it didn't matter what bullet weight we threw at it. You know, as long as we were running H4350, it really, and even some other powders, it really didn't even matter the bullet weight. We'd load, we'd work up a load, 
Um, didn't even put much effort into it and the thing would just shoot all day long. It was a really nice shooting rifle. And I just wanted to see what this Kimber, how it would perform because there, there's a couple of reviews on YouTube that, you know, basically, hey, that ha whole accuracy guarantee thing, man, they, they're not living up to it. And so I was a little worried after I bought the rifle and, uh, and everything. I'm like, well, hopefully we can get this thing to shoot really well. Um, and so here is the target from the other day. Went out with my buddies, uh, Robert from uh, Midway Pistol and Pawn over in Gurley. Went to the range with him and, and uh, also my buddy Brandon. We all met up at Hobbs Island uh, shooting range and, and did a little work down there. You know, just slinging some lead, having a good time. But I shot some of these groups uh, over there. And so on the bottom row, I'll just kind of walk you through it. On the bottom are the Nosler 120 grain ballistic tips. Uh, the middle is the the spear 140 gold dots and then the top are the hornady 160 grain uh, around those interlocked so what i'm really encouraged about uh, this particular target is the point of aim point of impact uh, yeah you had a little bit of a shift right to the left just slightly right in a couple of instances but overall you know point of aim point of impact very similar um, between these three bullet weights, which is really nice to see. And that's something that I was hoping to see because that's what we saw out of the Savage. Um, and so we see very similar point of impact. Uh, we had some really, really good groups um, on this target. I mean, that's a .366 inch group. You know, yes, they're only three shot groups. They're not five shot, but that's because the barrel profile is so thin on this rifle. You know, you have to wait such a long time between shots, between groups. Um, there were a couple instances where I didn't wait a long time between shots, like this one right here. Uh, this was the last group I shot and it was, it ended up measuring just under three quarters of an inch. These are quarter inch dots, by the way. Uh, this is 41.6 grains of H4350 and the 140 grain spear gold dot. And I, I fired off those three rounds in rapid succession. It was probably in under a minute, you know, I fired off those three rounds and three quarters of an inch. I would say that's pretty good. I mean, you're not really going to have hunting conditions where you're going to fire three rounds in rapid succession. So, you know, maybe a follow-up shot, maybe at most you'd have one follow-up shot. So, um, the first shot is the one that counts, but really good performance overall. I was, I was super thrilled to see, uh, down here, not so much. We just, for whatever reason, after that first group, it just didn't really want to group as well. Um, but I'm going to explore this even more. This was like middle of the road uh, on our charge weight that we could use with H4350. So we're actually going to push beyond this and see if we'll get, you know, see if we'll start to tighten back up. Uh, this is what, th in the spear manual, 42 grains is the max charge that it calls for. I mean, this is, this is just good shooting right here. Your worst group out of the three that I tested was just under three quarters of an inch. I think we're done, basically. I say we're done. I, I want to follow back up with the 42 grain charge. Um, if we can duplicate this performance, I mean, we'll just load up a bunch of those and call it done. And hey, that's what we're gonna run uh, come hunting season. And then same thing up here. I mean, I had that one weird flyer. I, I don't wanna call it a flyer, but at the same time, like, man, it kicked up pretty high. Um, but yeah, 40, 40.2, and 40.4. You know, we saw this same type of performance out of the Savage 110 Tactical, you know, with this bullet, the 160 grain round nose. Just, it always shot really, really good right around, I think the manual, the Hornady manual, the maximum charge is like 40.6. And it just, it always shot really well in the 40 to 40.4 grain range. It just, it always did. So same kind of song and dance here in this rifle, but. So that's where we're gonna that's really where we're gonna leave it. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update on this rifle, the purpose of it, why I picked it up. Um, I think it's just gonna be an absolute hammer on some deer this coming season. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a great uh, rifle to carry into the woods and can't wait to see it. can't wait for the season to get here. Hopefully we can get a deer on the ground and 
I'd really like to shoot one with these uh, 120 ballistic tips. I've killed one with 120 grain gold dots, not the 140, but I killed one with a 120 out of a Grendel. And then I've also killed one with 160 grain round nose. So I, I kind of already know that type of, you know, that bullet construction, I already know that performance. Uh, I've got some infield experience on that, but I'd really like to get one of these ballistic tips in a deer this year. So, but that's it. We'll leave it at that. Um, and we will catch y'all next time. So y'all have a good one. Same thing. Like if you're looking for, you know, any type of reloading supplies, firearms, you name it, optics, whatever it is, guys, you got to go check out Matt and his crew over at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. I mean, I know I say it on just about every single video, but there's a reason why I say it on every single video. Those guys, they're just on a, they're operating on a different level uh, when it comes to customer service and really trying to help out the shooter or the reloader or whatever. You walk in there and they genuinely care. They really want to do their best to help you out and point you in the right direction, right? And if they don't have it on the shelf right then, they'll be more than happy to order it for you. Um, so yeah, so y'all make sure you go uh, check those guys out. Let them know I sent you down there, but I know they'll be happy to see you come through the door. I just love going down there and getting a free cup of coffee too from time to time. Going there and just you know, talk to them, see what they've been up to, check in on things, see how their orders have been coming in. I know here lately they've been getting in more and more reloading stuff, so things are kind of loosening up just a little bit there, so that's good to see. Uh, and then also go check out Robert and, and uh, Mark over at Midway Pistol and Pawn and Gurley. Uh, you know, great guys over there. Go see them. Uh, Robert was telling me at the range that they're talking about, you know, now they're going to expand their shop a little bit. They're going to kind of open it up to where they're going to be able to hold more firearms, more, you know, optics, you name it, more ammunition, all this. So they're really working on trying to expand over there. Uh, so y'all go check them out too while you're at it and let them know I sent you over. So we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.